When I tell people that I am 78 years old, I often get comments like, if you dyed your hair, you could pass for 50. <laughs> or, what fountain of youth are you drinking from? These comments are usually voiced by women between 30 and 70 years old who also want to know how I arrived at this age so vibrant and in such good spirits. It's hard to believe I'm 78. <laughs> I still feel like a five-year-old exploring the world. When I ruminate on my past, I discover enough memories to prove that I have lived a long time. A lot of those memories I've written about. What I haven't written about before is the many changes I've gone through to get here. Changes that brought me to this place and age with no regrets. At 15, I had already anticipated the changes necessary to alter the trajectory of my life. No husband and children for me, I told my high school boyfriends. No safe school teacher's job for me, I told my high school guidance counselor. No more bowing to Southern segregation, I told myself. I plan to escape the life my parents inherited and decided my own fate up north where ambitious women would get ahead. It was the 1960s and change was in the air. Then, just before high school graduation, my mother, my sole caretaker, suddenly died. When I leaned into my uncle for support while standing near her casket as it was lowered into its grave, I remember sobbing, what's going to happen to me? My uncle's words, you always wanted to be in charge of your life, now you are, stayed with me long after my tears dried. Answerable to no one now, I sampled from the vast array of experiences that lay ahead of me as I entered college in Baltimore. I sampled from every smorgasbord I encountered and rejected anything that didn't suit my fancy. I never let anyone else direct the course of my ship, but without a compass, I often veered into the rocky shallows but I never lingered there long. Full of youthful naivete, I changed majors twice as an undergrad. I changed lovers like one changes the pages of a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I eschewed grad school and entered the work world where I changed jobs whenever a better one arrives on my horizon. I changed cities when the one I lived in stopped offering me new opportunities. I even changed careers several times. But what I could never change was my desire to prove my dead mother wrong. You can't have everything, she had often said. Not if you don't change, I had countered silently. Then in middle age, Against all odds, I married. <laughs> what was I thinking when I said yes to a union with a man who differed from me in everything from skin color to political party affiliation? I was saturated in love's hormones. <laughs> I was also seduced by his promise to always respect and support my dreams about a life of equality. I entered our marriage determined to make it a good one for both of us. After the usual honeymoon happiness phase, we settled into the intricacies of negotiating a long marriage. In one especially tough election period, 
I secretly considered changing marriage for singlehood <laughs> or for a new husband who would be a better fit for me. But our marriage really wasn't bad. Bob and I were cut from different but complementary cloth. All our marriage required was that two headstrong people learn to compromise without harboring resentment. So I stayed the course and sought ways to cultivate instead of change. Now, 33 years after Bob and I said I do, I realized that my mother was partially right. You can't have everything you think you want. Sometimes you just have to change your mind and realize that what you have is worth holding on to.